Here's the arcade cabinet completely stripped down from any parts on the inside and cleaned up. This is before I added anything to it. Uh, no control panel, no computer, no shelves, nothing like that in this cabinet. The reason I added this at the beginning of this video is simply because I didn't record any video beyond my last one where I did the time-lapse teardown. And I do apologize for that. I got excited and really wanted to tear this down. So, go ahead and watch this. And uh, we're going to move on to the buttons. Of course, I'm going to show the parts I tore out of it and what was all left inside this arcade cabinet. So, after this, let's get on to the buttons. Alrighty, well here is the next exciting installment of uh, working on building your own main cabinet and everything and uh, what you're looking at is the spaghetti plate nightmare that is the back of the buttons. Yeah, this is already all done and everything but uh, got a little overexcited and didn't film any of it and uh, it took a little bit for this all so I didn't have the chance to really grab my camera and get rolling. But, I promised some people that I would continue making these, and I've got this one more video I want to showcase before I unveil the whole arcade cabinet. So let's just get started. So, uh, first off, let me, let me see if I can get one of these buttons off here. I found out that they were a little, little tricky to get back off after you twisted them down, and that's because they have some grooves on the nut here that you put in there. And uh, as you can see, uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. It doesn't look like it's focusing on Well, there's some, some uh, raised bumps on there. We go. Some raised bumps. And it helps, uh, the nut helps grab the wood. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I went ahead and used a, a one inch drill boring tool to bore out the holes on here. Let me go ahead and move this here and you'll see out of there. <laughs> and um, went ahead and that still wasn't wide enough for the buttons I bought so we used just a Dremel tool to kind of widen them out just a little bit more because it still needed a good eighth of an inch uh, clearance. So use that very simple you can buy them at you know Walmart you know any any hardware place or anything like that and this is just a normal uh, three quarters inch board uh, I don't know what kind of wood it is uh, but it looked nice my father-in-law had some extra and once we started kind of looking at it and sanding it down giving it its nice little grain uh, it was really smooth anyway as you saw in my first video I've got the buttons here uh, as I said, uh, an inch and an eighth clearance, and as you can see there, it's got the lip here. Now, these buttons, I don't think I have them around here, had a, uh, had a ring that fit right up top, like, it was, that originally was supposed to go on these and fit right here. But if I put that on there, and then put that nut on there, the hole that I would have drilled for it, it would have fallen right through. It didn't make sense to me, so I didn't use the rings. Um, I think the rings were more to raise the buttons a little bit on the control panel. That don't work. I'm sorry, but that that ring has to be flush with the control deck. So let me let me kind of zoom in here a little bit and show you where that that hole was. And this is off in the far right, uh, and the reason is is with a main cabinet or with something like this 
you you want some like an escape button to get out of your game. Okay, um, you don't want to assign any of the other buttons as an escape or anything like that because if you're playing and you hit escape, that sucks. <clears throat> so, real quick, I want to show you what this button consists of. And once again, you have seen it in my previous video. Um, my video talking about when I receive my buttons. If I can get this off of here. These micro switches are a pain to take off once you've got them on there. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, but you know, I don't know if you want to uh, off there once you got it on there. Now, uh, I don't know if that's going to focus at all. I guess I guess I just have to back up. I guess I guess. So, we got the micro switch. Push it clear up a little bit. There you go. Uh, this just tells the button, the button, you know, when to push. Okay, I'm open, I'm closed, I'm sending the information to the computer, and it's just got that little tiny button there with that satisfying click. I've got the the harness for it, which is actually for the light as well. So and that's it. They, they, they just basically clip together. Uh, yeah. I'm making it look so easy. There's two, uh, two pegs here that hold it in place. Just find the bottom one, pop one there, kind of give it an odd little twist. There we go. Okay. Click. There we go. Got the full thing right there. A couple of grooves in the, or a couple of pegs here in the button. A couple of grooves here. All you do is just find the groove and twist. It locks in place. You know, have a fully working button. Now these buttons, uh, I want to say. They're good buttons for what they are from uh, Monster Arcade, and uh, you know they're good for what they are. But if you're gonna play a game like uh, Track and Field, these are not recommended. These these have a little bit more to push, and they're a little bit louder. I mean, I, as, as I push at, I don't know if you can tell, but they are a little bit louder. I don't like that much. So if you want buttons with the little curvature on them, perhaps you want to go with like half controls. Uh, they make some really nice buttons that you don't have to push as hard. So um, there's that, definitely. Um, but for the price, I paid 70 bucks for everything. And uh, that was a good price. So now I can go, if I want to later on, go and buy different buttons or whatever, I can. So. Let's get in there. <coughs> now I kind of put this on premature, so I gotta have a button fit in there. Now, all it does, like I said, fits on through. And that lip's gonna just kind of grab the, the button a little bit. I'm gonna make sure it's flush. Okay, and I see it's all flush there. See there, the actuator is just good. Fine, now I'm just gonna Keep some pressure on it, twist, boom. I now have my button installed in there and ready for wiring. Uh, make sure you have the have it twisted the way you want, where those leads are gonna be. Because these leads right now, the way I have this, I, I learned that this isn't the best configuration. Now one thing I did forget before I put that on make sure you have that nut in place because that button is going to go, it's going to take off when you try to go and start messing around with it. Okay, turn it off around here. Bam! All done. Now, <clears throat> this may look tricky. This next part, the wiring when you use player two is a reference here. But it's really not. 
throat's all funny. There are two wires that lead to every button, and two wires that lead to every switch in the joystick. One is a ground wire, and that, that is piggybacked to each one. Boom, 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 boom. That's all piggybacked. Leads to one wire to the, the uh, card, which I'll show you here in a bit. And then the other one actually comes up from the card and leads just let me see if I can get one here. That just leads to the, the regular buttons. Now one thing I did here that was kind of stupid is if you can see I have these micro switches facing down and I have these facing up. It's a stupid layout and it's one I learned about, learned my mistake on after doing it and after getting it all wired. Basically, some of the, the lengths of wire that I have aren't all that long, so some of them really stretch to get up here. Whereas if I face them all this way, facing down, I'll have a little bit more space and it'll be a little bit easier to deal with. So uh, let me see which one shows the best. I'll show this one right here. It can look so intimidating, but it's really not. They have the ground lead on the top, so that one's easy to get to. And then you've got two different um, prongs here that you know, you're know you probably thinking, oh man, I don't know which one to put it on. Well, both of them kind of serve a pur purpose. Okay, uh, basically what happens there is there's a, a loop in there. Yeah, it's a, a uh, switch basically it's open if you want it like right here with the ground here it's open as soon as you hit that button what it does is it closes that connection and that's what gives it the signal to the computer to say hey I'm closed do something now if I were to take this and put it here instead, that connection is always closed now. So the computer always thinks, hey, I'm pushed. So, and, and then once you push the button, it, it's like it releases the button. I don't know what benefit you would have in doing that, uh, what game would actually use something like that, but I mean, it's there, there's the option. So that's not bad. But for any normal game, have it open like that until pushed until, or then uh, closed on push, ground, and there you go. It's, it looks more complicated than it really is. This looks like it's really intimidating, but it's really not. It's, it was one of the more fun parts to put this thing together with. Uh, let me kind of show you here, let me. Gotta try to put this in there. There you go. And down here is uh, what's called the Zinmo card. A lot of people adopt the uh, iPack 2 or uh, the JPack cards, and those are nicer. But this came with the bundle for 70 bucks, and I was willing to try it. And as I said in the in the first video I did, this thing's about the size of a cracker, a saltine cracker. Very, very small. I've got some feet here to keep it tight to the board here. And as you can see, while it is a messy, wiry situation there, it all closes pretty nice. I've got my keyboard down here, and I've got a little uh, thumb mouse right here, thumb ball mouse, to um, control things. But I also have my coin one button, which I only had 18 here, so I've got to get another coin button, coin two. And then uh, a pinball flipper, as well as another pinball flipper over here. So there you have it. Uh, it all this is kind of the same with the joystick. There's uh, left, right, up, and down. Each one has their own wire and uh, as well as a ground that's piggybacked. Just 
follows around, and it doesn't matter what sequence they're piggyback to. But uh, these are real trial and error, and what's real great about them is when I hooked them up, trial and error, I could have them hooked up, and maybe they didn't work right, maybe these were in reverse and up and down. So while it was on and working, I could take those and move them around and then move them and see what was going on on my computer. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this has helped and look forward to the final episode of this before I finally show this thing. I know you guys are excited. So um, thank you for watching and uh, thank you for looking forward to these videos. So um, thanks again. Look forward to that. See you then.